welcome to the NBA Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Happy New Year, y'all! Yay, Happy New Year's uh, first podcast for the New Year. Whoop, whoop. Uh, th- 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 I have a strong feeling that this is going to be an awesome year. Uh, 2024, woohoo. Hopefully better than what we've had recently. Indeed. Also joining us today is Jacob. Hey, hello, everybody. Oof, man, that's been a long month that we've been absent, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, let's just say work equals busy. Yeah. But, like I mentioned before, or not really mentioned before, um... In today's podcast, we are going to, well, not really review any episodes or shows, but mostly um, a retrospective slash review of this year. How was it? What really woo us and whatnot? And, well, uh, h- how do we want to handle this, Silver? Should we go through personal things, entertainment, or stuff? Uh, well, stuff is kind of vague. Also, if we're do- if this is being posted in 2024 and we're doing a review of this year, it's been rather short, you know, about a couple of days. <laughs> it's been okay so far. <laughs> My bad for... Uh, I mean, last year, 2024. Ah, oh, wordings, Mr. Sanzo, wordings. But- uh, you know, we can do a little personal, each do a little personal reflection on what happened and points we remember. Also, I, I don't know if I can be as optimistic for my coming year, because here in America, it's an election year. Oh, wow. It's, oh, oof, I forgot silver, about it's that. Elec- silver, it's election year everywhere, <laughs> at least in Europe. Yeah. But we, but at least some European countries are smart. They say you have two weeks to uh, two weeks to campaign. Then you're done, and it's an intense two weeks. I do not deny you, but at least they're smart enough to limit it. Hmm. Me, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be taking multiple showers to wash off the mudslinging. <laughs> and I'm not even in the campaigns. I don't know how ever the people do it. Oh yes. Mm. Welcome to the club. So, is the orange joining this year? Oh, I really hope not. I really don't want him anywhere near our elections. Mm. And I'm all I hey, I can say I live in the state that took him off the ballot for the primary. And I am totally fine with that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, so- sounds if like... I never have to hear his name, I'd be very pleased. Thank you. Mm. Sounds like it's going to be rough. But hey, um, at, at least... Uh, you know what? I, I, I got no idea, man. Like, there, There's nobody I'm hearing that's really woo and ah, like um, years past. So uh, let's just hope that whoever is coming up is going to be awesome. <clears throat> well, we'll just have to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Norman, doesn't Malaysia have an elective monarchy? Ah, uh, it's how do I put this? It's like the Britons, like it, it's like how they're doing it. You, we, uh, we we have a so, um a sultan that's uh how to say Malaysia have about fourteen. St- States, something like that, but there's um, I think about thirteen sultans or yeah sultans and whatnot, and every I think what uh, four years or something like that. Or, I I forgot the number of years, but every um, number of years, uh, there's a cycle of okay, each sultan gets a chance to be the grand. Uh, Grand Puba, he he is the guy in charge of the whole of Malaysia, and by in charge I mean he's just a figurehead. While the prime minister 
and the government is mostly doing most of the jobs. Uh, the Sultan there do have power, but it's he's basically there just to be a figurehead and kind of get the newspaper if the government's doing something bad. And how does the average person think about uh, that system? I mean, does the Sultan function well? Uh, technically, each state has uh, sorry, uh, yeah, each state has their own uh, Sultan, and it's they, they 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 don't really get involved with politics. But if the gov the, if the local government for that state is doing something stupid something bad the sultan can just say hey you stop it or else and yeah they, they stop it or else and then try to do something else that won't anger the sultan well your government's already functioning far better than for either me or silver is <laughs> you, you think that but to be honest it's kind of a state by state basis, but how to put this? Uh, our local government, sorry, our government here is not like how it works in the states where each state has its own set of rules. Uh, over in Malaysia, we kind of have the huge general rule, but yeah, we, we have this huge general rule where uh, we follow the same law, follow the same thing, uh, but certain states have. A bit of a stringent, how to say, um, rules because of certain uh, political party, like more catered to um, Sharia law or more loose. It, it depends on states. But uh, in general, we just follow the same rule. <coughs> right. Makes things anyway, less complicated. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move away from politics now. Oh yeah, I, I got no idea what I'm saying, but still, that's that's the layman's sentiment for my thing. My 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 no, yeah, whatever. Don't care. So um, let's go in with entertainment. Let's go for in in for entertainment. So this year, uh, th there's a lot of movies that came out, but also at the same time too, I feel like. This year also was not as awesome as previous years. Am I wrong? Well, there were a few really, really good movies, like uh, Across the Spider-Verse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the Mario movie stunned everybody. I mean, it's not like a, a deep story, but by God, if you saw the Super Mario movie in the 90s... <laughs> That is also true. You know what it is re really for. And uh, Godzilla minus one. Oh, <laughs> oh a masterpiece. Hurry was good. Hurry was good. So, Silver, w what stood out for you, man? Well, uh, well, I just listed several. Uh, I'm actually on a website trying to look up all the movies that came out, but that includes all the knockoff movie schlock. Mm -hmm. I apparently, apparently I missed a movie called The Loch Ness Horror. I'll have to double back on that one. The Loch Ness Horror. <laughs> yep. Uh, if I'm if I'm seeing the trailer right, it's Nessie got gets into the English Channel somehow. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Well, of course, it's a really bad CG Nessie and all that good stuff. I mean, still. Uh, <laughs> But still, we had uh, Shin Kamen Rider, a uh, retelling of the original Kamen Rider and all that uh, goes with it. Mm -hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed that one. Oh. And let's see. Oh. And let's see. I'm trying to recall. I didn't get to see as many movies this year. There were times in 2022 I feel like we were going to the movie theater every other weekend. Mm -hmm. That's also true. Uh, anything from Marvel that you remember? Well, let's see here. I mean, I, I did see Ant-Man and Quantumania, and unlike most folks, I I thought it was 
it was fun. It was sort of their take on Star Wars. Really? Just in in the quantum realm. Oh. At least my take. An evil ruler or a plucky resistance of of essentially alien beings from across Man, I'm not even well, okay. I guess I don't know all the details, but quite the array. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Oh, there was Wakanda Forever, mm -hmm. which was a very fitting tribute to uh, Chad. Is it Chadwick? No, no. Ted Bosman? Yeah, okay. Yes, I, I was worried I was going to say his name wrong. Chadwick Bosman. It was a fitting send off to him, uh, continuing the Black Panther uh, lineage. And being a good Marvel movie, uh, the Marvels was okay. Uh, mostly Camilla Khan carried it, mostly because of her excitement and wide-eyed. Although, funny enough, the concession stand at the uh, theater actually spoiled part of the movie for me. Oh, how so? What did they do? They were selling pop. Well, have you both seen it? Um, I, for me, yes. I am no. not sure. And I have no intention of smoking, of seeing it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there we go. Well, part of the movie is that you discover there are these weird pods all over the shield uh, orbital station. And you're like, oh, what are they? What are they doing? Well, the the uh, concession stand had popcorn balls in the same shape of those eggs with little kit kitten plushies. Oh, no. So, so I was like, oh, okay. I know what they are. Space. Thanks, concession stand. Space cats. Space cats. It, it's yes. not. It, it's not a how I put it. A um, what was the word looking for? It was not a unknown thing. It, it was done before, so it was kind of known. But still, I don't know. Even the first time, it wasn't good. I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Well, either which way, uh, and then there was Ninja Turtles Mutant Mania, or sorry, Mutant Mayhem, which was a fun movie, a, a different take on the Ninja Turtles, definitely different goal, although the greater humor was that uh, the controversy beforehand. Oh. Wow. Uh, apparently, one of the, one of the, the characters... Oh, which one was it? It's a, it's this disgusting roach enemy or mutant. Oh yeah, that's First what I do. And enemy. That's what I do remember. Basically, they've been promoting uh, this roach guy for a long time, and then in the movies apparently revealed that he's in gay relationship with Splinter. Except that, at least in the version I saw, it was a. Sh they definitely used she. Well, yeah, that's because so they like, that's, that's because they tried to backpedal after the backlash that followed. Even though the promotion oh. material was months ahead, but apparently they decided to change it like last minute. <clears throat> well, either which way, I found it rather uh, silly. Hmm. The whole affair was just silly. But I like Jackie Chan as Splinter. Mm. Uh, Jackie Chan. Yeah. Yeah. Jackie Chan voice Splinter. Mm -hmm. That part I do know. Hmm. And let's see here. Oh, there was also. Uh, Wait, I, I, oh, oh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, oh. Honor Amongst Thieves. Oh, that, that's, that one, I, yeah, 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 that, oh, man, I, that one was great. That, that was a under, how to put it, that was a surprise out of nowhere kind of movie because nobody thought it was going to be good, and it was surprisingly fun and entertaining. Uh, let me see what uh, Rotten Tomatoes have to say, uh. Uh, D and D movie. Yes, this one. Uh, I IMDb. No, no. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. Rotten Tomatoes. Huh. That is. Oh wow. It's 
and it, for the tournament, it was a 91 for critics and 93 for audience. That is pretty high. Darn straight. And then there was a haunting in Venice, Hercule Perot. Did not watch that. Haven't heard of that. Oh, you must. It's an excellent murder mystery with a slight horror aspect to it. Hmm. All right. So, a haunting in Venice. And then, of course, Barbenheimer. Oppenheimer? The only, w- the, only, the only way you could promote a movie more is to make a meme out of it. Yeah. But, uh, to, to, to Barbie and Oppenheimer at the same time, right? And I saw both. Barbieheimer. <laughs> oh, it, it's surprisingly well done. That, that's the thing. Barbie or Oppenheimer? Both. I mean, Chris Christopher Nolan with his movies, yeah. But no, I mean Barbie. But Barbie is one of those movies that is like, wait, what? You at, at first it was okay. The first thing, the first time when they announced Barbie the movie, I thought. Ah, uh, this is just one of those... Okay, this is going to be disappointing. This is going to be disappointing. But reviews came out, people came in, and like it, there was a lot of positivity. And I'm here like, wait, what? Really? And then the memes came out with the artworks and stuff, especially the one where the uh, mugshot that they took. That... That that picture has been meme to hell and back. Uh, you got ponies version of it. You got uh, oh, I'm forgetting. There's ponies. There's just insert IP here, and you'll get it. So, well, he, here's what I know. I wasn't go. I saw Oppenheimer, and by the way, Norman, I love how quickly you dismiss uh its director. I mean. It, it, he does great work. So, I uh, this is just like, oh yeah, you know, uh, fantastic uh, artist, uh, defining piece, yeah, whatever. Now Barbie, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. You already knew what you're getting into, right? Like with a movie from Christopher Nolan, you, you're going to get high art, a lot of stuff. Like, this is movie is going to be great. This movie is going to be. Um, <clears throat> Defining, yes, this this movie is going to be awesome. It's going to win a lot of awards. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Barbie, that came out of left field. <laughs> it did, but I, I, I still I feel like I I should try to react to movies the way. Oh yeah, touch me, touch me on a deep spiritual level. <laughs> Greatest movie I've ever seen. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> True that. <laughs> that, that's but, how I'm living life. <laughs> oh yeah. Fun. Sorry. Funny thing was, I wasn't gonna go see the Barbie movie originally because, well, Barbie. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not really a Barbie fan. I mean, you know, it's like that one, that one might probably for the ladies. Of course, it's kind of funny to see that being an MLP fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then all I saw was uh, videos on YouTube and talking points about, oh, this Barbie movie, it's a feminist paradise, or it's so anti-man, or yada, yada, yada. And it's like, okay, if there, if I'm gonna have to, if I'm gonna have an opinion about it, I need to at least see it, which ironically is more than some of those commentators had done. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. So I went and I had a different experience, so I enjoyed it. I didn't feel as threatened as other people did, apparently. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I just thought, well, oh, there's a philosophy that the more you try to destroy something, the more you actually reinforce it. And I think that's true with Barbie. The word of mouth was excellent uh, promotional material. Yeah, th- that's how mo- th- that's how you know a movie is good by the voc by, by how it's getting spread like word of mouth and whatnot except for morbius because that is just a meme well <sighs> yep wait that was that was 2022 wasn't it i i hope so <laughs> let me see uh, uh, Mor- morbius movie yeah, yeah, 2022, 2022. Yep. Uh, no. 
<laughs> yeah, I was about Mormon time. I hadn't heard that in a while. Yeah. Oh, God. People were actually disappointed when they watched the movie and didn't hear said Mormon time. No, that just shows the meme was misleading. Oh, no. no, no. Oh, God. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh, God. But, yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, but, yeah, I, I believe we, we almost watched the same movie, Silver, so, yeah. <clears throat> That that was great. Oh, now I remember what I wanted to share with you in the uh, what you call this uh, Discord chat. Uh, it was the D and D movie, and the local theater that I went to. They had this um, promotion where you you can get a drink, uh, not really a mug, but a Dice tower that can hold your drink. Oh, nice. Let me see if I can show you. Okay, it's this one. All righty then. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let, let me just grab... The, no, thank you. Uh, let me just grab the picture and just uh, open image. Store, save it. Give me a second. Um, open... Yeah, you know, I'll put it in downloads here. Okay. I'll open my Discord here and share it with you guys. Uh, okay, there we go. So yeah, this this was uh, promoted kind of after the movie or before the movie. I, I I think it was before, but this was like wow. And uh, I I don't know what people were thinking. <laughs> I mean, the glass is pretty small when you look at it. Oh, yeah, but you're not buying it for the glass or the drink holder. Well, <laughs> you're buying it for the tower, my friend. Yeah. Actually, but but here's the question. Is it half full or half empty? <laughs> I don't know. Well, all I know is that it was a great uh, impulse purchase. I got this, by the way, and I got no idea where to keep it. <laughs> Uh, best one fifty five dollar ring ringgit of my life. Oh, uh, but yeah. Oh boy. But <clears throat> but besides that, um, I I believe I I I watch a few that a few movies that I think I um got out my movie club thing and see. So w one of the few movies I saw was Flash, or The Flash. It ah! <laughs> Wait, sorry, wrong Flash. Uh, it was entertaining. I I have to say it, it it was not bad, but it was entertaining, and I believe that most of the movies I watched were in this in this what you would call this state of it was not bad, but it was not good. It was just entertaining. <laughs> you have experienced that uh, kind of feeling, Silva? Oh yeah, it was lots of movies. I mean, you know, it's kind of a, a, f a nice distraction, but you forget about it almost as soon as you've left the theater. Yeah, kind of like um, Transformers: Rise of the Beast. I, I watched yeah, that. I it's, I intentionally skipped that. It uh, it was not bad, but it was not good. It was entertaining. <laughs> I mean, I, from what I understand, the Maximals don't even transform until the very end, oh, and only two, only two of them talk. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. I I think that was Cheetor and Rhinox, uh, the Falcon robot. Air Razor. Yeah, Air Razor was there, but she died later. I think. I don't know. I don't remember. Uh -oh. I could kill what what is with them in killing the female transformers the, the blow RC's head off in revenge of the fallen well, RC's and here RC's they're here killing it. She, she, oh there's another RC uh, uh, oh yeah this, they just rolled out the new model um to explain isn't sorry go ahead uh isn't this new transformers mo movie outside of uh, <clears throat> the previous continuity what was it uh this is yes Based uh, stuff. sorry go ahead no, no, I said it. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know anymore. I've given up hope on understanding. Uh, this set of Transformers movie is based on the... It's kind of a reboot. Uh, this is based on the Transformers Bumblebee movie, where uh, that is considered to be the fresh reboot, where Bumblebee is the start, and then you'll get this one, and then somewhere in the future, you'll get the third one, and also spoilers i think nobody really cares but uh they hinted that gi joe exists in the same universe oh yeah that was like the post credit scene mm -hmm. and i i got excited for that because oh wow i can't wait for them to do this stupid crossover it'll be fun And I, I don't know if I'd be quite as excited. I mean, Norman, I feel that you we have sort of a count, subverting expectations reactions. And it's a great cinematic masterpiece of epic proportions or something. I don't know. Wow, I can't wait to see this piece of schlock. <laughs> because that's it. Because it, that's the thing. Because yeah, you know what you're getting with good movies. You're, you're getting this intellectual movie where this is going to be the greatest movie I've seen in my life. But when you see this hmm, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, what am I going to get out of this? You watch the trailers and then you think, hmm, it's fun and jam-packed with action, but what am I really getting out of this? And once you see it, it's like, huh, it's fun and entertaining, yes, okay. But certain tidbits, like they put in in the after credits, the, the, the whatever they they have, uh, they kind of signal, hey, we're trying to do this. Are you excited for this? And me with my little brain here says, yeah, I can't wait to see you do this. I can't wait to see John Cena in this movie with Shazam. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to do it? <laughs> can you do it? <laughs> and, and that's how I think, like, Okay, they, they shoot for the stars, and if they can't get it off the ground with the whatever rocket ship, it's, it's their fault. They, they're kind of, they blew it. They, they have something good, and they blew it. <clears throat> well, makes sense. But I'm still going to play it up just for laughs. <laughs> Indeed. And Jacob, what about you? Any movies that you watched this year? Uh, to be completely honest, naturally, the last movie I saw was Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And even that was uh, not in theaters because, well, when it comes to uh, animated movies or anything that seems remotely uh, directed at children, uh, my country has the tendency to just uh, dub the whole thing and never release any. Uh, not to make any release of the original uh, recording. And to be quite honest, I just can't stomach the Slovenian dub of uh, English uh, movies. Your family or you yourself? Or the country? I, I can't stand it. Ah, you, alright. Because if if it's something that's um, that was ma made by somebody else, I prefer to just see it... Uh, in the original language, even if I have to read subtitles. I mean, I don't need to read subtitles for the English because it's basically just like my second language, but... Ugh, I, I don't know, I just cringe whenever I hear uh, Slovenian language being spoken in the uh, English uh, movie. And then sometimes the context is lost because of uh, language barriers. Oh, yeah. Especially when it comes to jokes. Uh, I, I feel you because I, I, I'm in the same boat as you, but at the same time too, I kind of avoid watching dub, uh, dub shows or dub movies. Um, and let me preface this by, I avoid watching in Malaysian dub or Malay dub because I understand English. So why would I want to watch a movie that is dubbed in Malay? Because it, it makes no sense for me. I've seen a few yeah. shows that do that because um, certain family members want to watch it in uh, the Malay language. And I just 
oh no, my brain can't accept this. I, I need to shut it down. <laughs> So that's why I prefer to watch uh, Asterix animated stuff. Uh, well, uh, there are in, in a few rare cases that I'm fine with the English or even German, but I prefer to just watch the original French. <laughs> Asterix is French, right? Yeah. Uh. Well, technically it's Franco-Belgian, but whatever. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So, have you experienced that before? Oh, watching dubs and subs and all that jazz? Yeah. Well, I mean, certainly when I was a Godzilla fan, I watched any number of terrible American dubs. And, oh boy. Yeah, Gamera dubs. Mostly giant monsters. Mm. But I feel like you, you, it's not the same as what we're experiencing because most of the shows mm. you watch are, well, technically English and you live in a place that speaks English as its local language. So hey hey hmm? we speak bad English. Ah, yes, I'm sorry. I I really want to be firm on that. We speak horrible English. Uh, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> but uh but yeah. Uh, do you speak another language silver? Just just curious, just asking. Uh hablo solo un poco español y mi español es muy mal. A bit of Spanish then, right? See, mm, all right. So mm, this would so if you watch a Spanish show, you will kind of understand it. Well, here's the thing: the words I can, but the speed has always been my greatest barrier. Uh, a lot of Spanish or a variant countries seem to speak at very accelerated rates, and I can't keep up. They don't really go over that in school. Hmm. Could it be because of a slang thing or just because it's how they normally speak? Like, it's how normal speak? Mm, I'm unsure. Oh, well. I don't know enough about the respective cultures or their histories. All right, makes sense, makes sense. So, off from movies, video games. Anything for this year that you guys play that's kind of wowed you? Ooh, a whole lot, actually. Oh. But one that I finally got, uh, well, uh, the, the usual standard of uh, Warhammer, since it's sort of, well, I've fallen out with WoW because of the bullshit they've been doing, and I sort of started getting into Warhammer, both the fantasy and the 40k universe. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, well, with the, what was it, Black Friday, I finally managed to get a discount for Hogwarts Legacy. Oh. And it's pretty good. How, how, do you, how are you enjoying it? Because I heard a lot of good things about Hogwarts, uh, Hogwarts Legacy. Too bad that he didn't win Game of the Year or something like that. Because there's a certain game that kind of stole his thunder. Yeah, that was Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> that, that, that was no contest whatsoever. But, well, Hogwarts was uh, pretty much the most popular, especially considering that people who vastly opposed, it, opposed its existence because of the, well, creator of the source material, instead of, uh, well, dissuading people from buying it, it just fanned the flames for people to buy it even more. <laughs> Mm, again, you try to destroy something, you only strengthen it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. to be honest, that, that game is fun, right? Like, it, it's one of those games that, hey, this is a fun and entertaining game. Uh, people should play it, some kind of uh, thing, right? Have you ever played any of the previous Harry Potter games that were specifically oh. focused on the character? Oh, if, if you're asking me if I play any Harry Potter games, uh, I played it the first one on the PlayStation 1. <laughs> yeah, I played it on the PC, but PC and PlayStation versions are completely different. Mm -hmm. Yep, so... Well, it, mm -hmm. it's definitely better than that. Uh, ah, yes. But I have seen um, videos on it, and it seems like a fun... Uh, game like it, 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 how to put this? 
it's a build your own character game kind of RPG where you uh, get to know certain characters, uh, be friends with them, take classes, and then at night you sneak out to do stuff. And if you're going for the evil route, you can become evil as heck. Well, I haven't gotten that far yet because <laughs> I sort of got sidetracked because uh, well, much like any of the other games that give you, uh, well, the ability to explore, I sort of uh, wandered away from the main story just to do the side, of, the side objectives because it's just too much fun. <laughs> Hey, it's a it's a good game, and yeah, why not, right? Like as long as you you how to say, as long as you're having fun that way, so that's awesome. Yeah, well, it's just very. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, although I'm still having a bit of trouble trying to get used to the broom flying. I don't know. Maybe maybe that was designed purely to be played with a control, but I'm not sure about that. Mm. Maybe a yeah, so see what you were saying. Well, I had a similar experience with good old uh, Spider Man 2, which is not that old. Wait, what? Spider Man 2? Uh, Spider Man PS5 or Spider Man Miles Morales? Oh no, whole new Spider Man. This is, well, it, it features Spider Man and Miles Morales. You, you, Sp- you play on PS? Sorry. Uh, I, I'm a bit out of the loop. Do you have a PS5? Yes. Ooh, that's new info for me. How is it? Well, it's cert- I'm certainly enjoying it. It was, uh, well, it's a very powerful system. It pl- It even makes playing older games a lot more fun. My main go-to has been Destiny 2 for a while. And on a PS4, you really couldn't... Sw- it couldn't load things fast enough that you could swap weapons during a game or or it took forever to load. Then all of a sudden, you get a PS5. Wow, I can equip what I need right there on the fly. But, it, but the PS5, PS5 was Spider-Man. Oh, my goodness. To swing through New York again. Did you, to get that exhilaration rush. Did you upgrade the hard... Um, not really hard disk, but the... Yeah, let's just go for hard disk. Did you upgrade the hard disk, Silver? You mean the memory? Yes. Uh, I did buy an ex- uh, external drive to help because, by God, they don't give you enough memory. I mean, these days, most video games cost, mm-hmm. or no, they take up over 100 gigabytes of space. Yeah, yeah. And get, getting a SSD just to put it in costs about what? A few, a few bucks, a few bucks. But still, also oh, more than a few. I'm a bit so it was. Uh, I'm just like I could. I uh, I would see the uh, the objective, the the next story point, and I'd be like, "But what's over here?" Yeah, and I would go any other direction yeah, <laughs> because it was just too much fun to swing around and do Spider Man things. Oh, I miss yeah, I miss yeah. that man. I I miss that. Like I I remember doing that for the PS4 and just feeling that oh my god, I would rather just go for the side missions rather than the main quest. Like oh main quest, oh bad main quest bad. Go go side mission and just try to finish the side mission. And oh I hate screwball, but screwball is side mission. Hmm. Oh, it's true. Screwball, thankfully, you know, she's not in the second game. Good. Dare I hope that Craven got her? <laughs> I, know that's a, I know that's a horrible thing to say, but dare I hope Craven got her? Mm, yep, yep. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, oh, man. So when did you get the PS5? I, this is new. I haven't heard oh. of it. Did you, did you talk about it? Oh, uh, this was a more of a 2022 adventure. Oh, okay. What's this story? So I, I'm a lovely lady. No, uh, I gotta put it. Well, mostly I, I subscribed or followed on Twitter, several stock trackers Uh. that were keeping their eyes out for PS5. And 
I would found myself sitting in a rather chilly shade of a GameStop. That's a very big retail chain here. Oh, that's another movie I didn't talk about. Dumb Money. Oh, yeah. But, okay. but uh, basically, I just got to know people in line, and we all stood there patiently as we waited to see how many uh, PlayStations they got in. And they'd be like, we got six PlayStations. Six. Think about that for a minute. Uh, but, no, nope, my patience and willingness to sit in the cold paid off. Oh, wow. Do, do, those are the Nintendo Wii days. Mm, yes, I remember those, too. Do, do, those were the olden days where... Uh, oh, man. Personally, personally, I haven't experienced that before because Malaysia don't do that for whatever reason. I don't know. But uh, back in the days for... Uh, what you call this? Uh, the States. You, you had the... Uh, PlayStation 3 launch you had the uh, Nintendo Wii and then uh, the Xbox launch like the waiting in line the whatever those were awesome to hear and just hear people talk about it. like oh we, we were in line we, we got to know each other and so on blah 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 those were fun and so but basically, well, I haven't played Baldur's Gate 3. I can definitely commiserate on, you, you know, the it, a game so fun you don't want it to end. You stay away from the story for as much as you can just to enjoy the side missions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, Happy New Year. Just so you know, past 12 a.m. here. Wait, is You're, it already? For me, yes. <laughs> oh, I wonder. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be it's gonna be like until six o'clock. Well, for my time it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, time zones, folks. But yes, um. Time zone. Curse you, curve globe. <laughs> oh man. So, so so tell me, Norman. Hmm? What's the future like? It's dark. It's dark and noisy. <laughs> well, th you need to turn on the light. Oh yes. Okay. No. 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 Now that helps. <laughs> but uh, um. One thing I can say, right, um, I'm excited to purchase the, um, what you call this, Baldur's Gate 3, because I've been playing D&D for a while now, and seeing people play Baldur's Gate 3, and seeing the stuff that I know about D&D transferred here, it's like, oh wow, I want to do that, I, I, I want to play, and I, I, I'll... I'll, I'll soon get it because um, it's on sale, which is kind of cool on Steam. So uh, I, I highly recommend go getting it now. But as for me and my games, right, I, I haven't bought anything new except for one. And that's Street Fighter VI. Aha. And I have to say, this is very 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 good and very comprehensive like if you're if you played Street Fighter before right yeah this game here feels like a new a new f fresh start uh, and the way that they kind of deal with controlling your characters because back in the days you need to know how to do the quarter circle forward the for down forward to do the sure you can and like th there's a lot of confusing moves so they dumb it down with the as they call it modern controls so in modern controls all you need to do is press one button and press another button to do your fireball and so on so basically it's a simpler way to control your characters and I, sorry and instead focus on like strategy yeah, strategy and just more of having fun. Like, you, you don't really need to be a pro to kind of get into the character or just get to play. Like You can mess around with the characters, just press buttons and do stuff. And with my history of Street Fighter, I used to play Ryu a lot because he's the main character, he's the um, lead guy and so on. He's, he's a lot of fun. But... Somehow, 
with Street Fighter Six, I pivot. I pivot really hard. I switched to Zangief. And <laughs> you saw the workout video, didn't you? Which one? The workouts. Not really, but. Oh, uh, the cutscene. Zangief is like juggling, <laughs> uh, jumping on one leg while doing massive, massive weights. You can do it. I believe in you. I, uh, Silver. Um, I had this mental black. Sorry. Um, this mental block where okay, I'm interested in the game. I'm not gonna watch anything. When I got to that moment, right, I'm like, by George, how freaking strong is this guy? Can I do that? <laughs> I'm just thinking, can I do that? Like, if I could, that would be awesome. <laughs> but no, um, funny enough, bec- uh, the reason why I pivot to Zangief, and if you know Zangief, he, he is a totally different style of character from Ryu. Right? Because of modern controls, it made him play, uh, playing him was easy. But no, um, the only reason why I picked him was because of Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Uh, they did they cross over with uh, Capcom Street Fighter. So you they have Magic the Gathering cards uh, with Street Fighter characters. And I I played a card with Zangief and it was fun. And that kind of somehow carried over to playing the character in game. So yeah, that, 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 that's how it that's how I played Zangief. And Magic the Gathering this year came out with a lot of interesting set. But the one set I want to talk about is the crossover with Doctor Who. <clears throat> and Oh my goodness. And I have to say, it was the set, it was amazing. It was value bang for the buck, value for your money. And if you were if you are a Doctor Who fan, I suggest getting the set like j- just just buy one commander precon and just be happy with it uh the way that they came out with the set is uh they have four commander sets and they came out with the first true first to eight doctor uh eight to eleven thir- twelve to thirteen and the villains Always the villains, and and funny enough, the villain deck is fun and strong. So yeah, um, if you're a fan, go get it. Or if you're not a fan but just want the card, go buy it online. It's not that expensive. Just just buy one card. You'll be happy with it. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so yeah, I think that's about my what you might call this state with gaming. Oh, there's one game that I've been playing since last year. Have you guys heard the game Vampire Survivors? Yeah, you mentioned it several times, actually. Yes. I highly recommend playing the game. (laughs) It's stupid cheap and stupid fun. And it's not that big. So, Silver, you should get it, probably, on your PS5. Well, I'll have to look into it. I've never—I don't think I've even heard of it. it it's it, how, how do I put this? It's one of those games where, if you see the trailer, and you think, "What the crap kind of game is this?" Did Norman recommend me a lemon? And I—the the only thing I can say about this game is, it's one of those games where you need to experience it you need to play with it and you need to have you know just play with it and you'll slowly discover that oh now i see the appeal and yeah that's that's how i'll uh, i i explain it (sighs) but yeah 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 so silver uh you want to tackle anything else well, how about, is there anything that just went on with your life this year that uh, really stands out? That, you know, you, you took a lesson from 2023 and want to apply it to 2024? Hmm. 
You guys first. Uh, my mine mine is kind of heavy. Well, okay, I'll go. I'll go first then, just as a to start things off. Mine was kind of heavy too. You see, in the spring, I'm literally back from uh, a convention, like three steps off the plane. When I get a call from my friend, a friend of mine had a really bad fall and is in the hospital. And I have walked with her through the entire year as she was in physical therapy, had to get her shoulder replaced, then more physical therapy, uh, driving her to uh, medical follow-ups and trying to help out and uh, what am I? And then seeing her get stronger and now she's uh, doing Uber drives as a, uh, as a, to earn some money. So she's back in the saddle, but it has been a very demanding time, but it's given me appreciation for health and mobility. Even uh, an injury I had briefly for about a week of a very, very pained muscle which really hindered my mobility, gave me a greater appreciation. So I have that and going forward, I, health has been a big thing. The other big decision was to ask some professional organizers to, well, hire professional organizers to come to my home and help me tackle several problem areas, uh -oh. which meant a lot. My home was in a very big disarray but asking for help, not only did we reorganize, but they gave me new ideas, which I can apply to other <laughs> trouble spots in my home. So I'm very glad I asked for that help. Mm, all right. This sounds cool. Sounds like, sounds like you took the right steps. Well, I'm trying to. <clears throat> Anything else? Oh, I feel like that's plenty right there. All right, all right. Jacob, what about you? Well, nothing as uh, drastic as what you two have gone through. Uh, the, the one thing that I can think of that happened was that I finally officially got employed at the end of August. And that was on, on the current job I was like on, the, on trial for like a whole year, honestly, before I finally, they finally took me in. Well, congratulations. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. And before that, I was like uh, eight years unemployed altogether. I honestly couldn't uh, get anything that would stick. But that's about it, really, honestly. Mm, all right. So, with <coughs> me, well, uh, last year was full of ups and downs no, nothing really happened to me to have that epiphany until well you you, you guys I, I feel like I I think I told you guys but the grand in the grand scheme did, did I tell the audience at home I feel like I did with, a pre with another video but yeah um if you guys are confused this year my father passed away so ooh, okay sorry mm, yes my father passed away and that took a lot out of me yeah that, that took a lot out of me and just trying to process that is just something else and how, how do we do this it uh, i'm trying to think if have i pro have have i gotten over it i mean uh, just 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 thinking like have i gotten past it uh, i feel yes and no probably i don't know but the thing is, I'm, I'm still trying to 
move forward with this. I, I know that certain people have uh, certain people move at their own speed and whatnot. And yeah, I mean, yeah. And I, I'm just trying to keep it together. Yes. But it makes me appreciate the people that I have around me. And yeah, th th that is why that... Oh, wow. Let's just say that starting next year, I'm just going to be appreciative of people around me and get the time to be with them, you know? I get you. Sure. Yeah. It, it happened a while ago. It was happening in July. So, yeah, still, I, I don't know. Pe like, like they say, people have their own way of coping and getting through things. And as for me, I'm getting through it in my own way. It's just a bit rough. That's all. <laughs> mm. So yeah. So let's see. Uh, I I think that's about it. We we tackle movies, games, shows we've watched, and uh, life. Actually, I think we forgot something. Oh, what was it? Oh. Uh, the big winner of this year. What we got on the Netflix? <laughs> oh, what's that? One Piece live action. <laughs> have you watched it so well, far? Can I confess? <coughs> no, I have not kept up with the One Piece anime with its over 1,000 episodes at this point. And so I haven't kept up with the live action either. Mm. Actually, oddly enough, I just watched the thriller Bark Arc. I wondered how on earth anyone could keep up with all those various laughters. From... <laughs> From oh yeah, he did that so much. From what I understand of the One Piece move, sorry, One Piece, right? Uh, if you read the manga, it's much faster. Like you could probably get to uh, just finishing it in about or catching up to it in about six months if you read a chapter every day. Six months, a chapter a day. Good Lord. Because the thing is, uh, from what I understand, the manga is fast. Like, blink and you'll miss it kind of situation. The anime has this thing called fillers. <clears throat> so Yeah, but uh, fillers are mostly there to, well... Uh, you know uh, how it is when something is uh, uh, when the anime is uh, almost catching up to the uh, source material and the first ma source material hasn't gotten very far, so they have to prolong this one. And so animations, especially infamous with One Piece, because well, there's parts where they <coughs> try to uh, put one chapter. Uh, in I mean, they try to make one episode out of a chapter and hardly anything happens in that. I mean, it wasn't uh, noticeable in the first, uh, at the start, because, well, there was more than one chapter in certain episodes. Yeah, but that's, that's the, whatchamacallit, this. that is the uh, anime, and like I mentioned before, uh, if you're really interested, just read the manga. Like, yeah, but the but earlier what you said that you could read it all in half a year if you read a chapter a day. Uh, no, you wouldn't. You'd probably get to like uh, to the end of uh, Adabasta arc because that's like a hundred and eighty chapters. I mean, that's true, but probably you'll <laughs> cheat. I, I, the thing is, people will cheat because they're excited to read the next chapter, to read the next chapter. So yeah, but still, um, reading it is much better than uh, watching it. And of course, then the there's the live action, which basically condenses like how many chapters or episodes is uh, is the saga long again, like fifty or something. Hold on, let me just check quickly. 
a, a lot, if I'm not mistaken. Like, uh, from the beginning to the, uh, oh, well, what was that chapter called? I forgot. But yeah, uh, the One Piece any sorry, uh, well, the One Piece live action is worth the watch if you have the time. Ah, uh-huh, there it is. Like, uh, in manga terms, uh, the East Blue Saga leads to the point where the uh, live action ends its 95 chapters. Wow. Because Luke, because Luke Town Arc wasn't adapted. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, they're saying it for season two. Wow. But still, but still, uh, it, it, if, if, it, if you're interested, yes. And also there's the, Cyberpunk Edge Runners uh, anime. You watched that, Silver? I did. I thought that was very well done. I I really need to catch that. Like that that seems like up my alley. But one of the few things, like <laughs> since we're on this boat for a bit, uh, I, I'm just going to hijack it and just say this because uh, this year for me has been a bit of a roller coaster of watching animes and the whole thing started just by me scrolling through instagram and seeing this anime video of oh this looks like a fun premise for a show what is this show called go watch it and oh it's complete I, I i'll guess i'll sit here and spend four hours watching the whole series oh that's fun so I, I watch a lot of crap right now. Like, I don't remember what I watched, but highlights for this year that I am ex- excited for the second series is, uh, have you guys heard of the anime called Initial D? Yeah. Yeah, that's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this year, they had a s- sequel to it kind of a jump forward in time kind of bit where the show is called MF Ghosts. So you have the mm. new CG that uh, you, if you watch the, what you call this, uh, initially anime, you have that new CG brought over here uh, and it's mostly shot in the day so you can see the cars. Wow. And instead of using Japanese cars, well, there are some Japanese cars in the show. They are introducing more European cars like Lamborghini, Ferrari, uh, Audi. So you, you have a w- wide range of cars in the show. And it's fun. It's, it's a watch. So, yeah, I, I'm does, just recommending people go watch MF Ghost. That, that is fun. Does it have any new uh, Eurobeats? Yes, there is! Okay, I'm looking forward to seeing that one. So, yeah, I guess with that we can wrap it up. Anything else to add? Uh, yes, no? Mm, nope, I think that's we've covered plenty. Yep. All right, then, if that's the case, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. I think it's, still, I, I think it's called Twitter. I'm not sure what they're calling it now, but I like Twitter because Twitter's memorable. But anyway, you can find me, or oh, sorry, the show at Norman, <laughs> at the MBS show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? On Twitter, YouTube, and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can also do a search for Silver Quill and After the Fact, and you'll find me on YouTube. Uh, that will also hold links to my Patreon and Kofi, so you can support After the Fact. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Anything, anywhere going, Silver, for next year? Conventions and whatnot? Well, I've been accepted as a HarmonyCon uh, community guest. Ooh. And that will be February 2nd through the 4th in their new venue in the middle of Dallas, Texas. When's that again? I am in... When? Uh, February 2nd through the 4th. Oh, that's soon. Wow. Well, time waits for no one. Sounds like you're going to have fun in Dallas, Texas. I'm trying to remember what food... Is popular there. 
barbecue? Bar barbecue, lots of barbecue. Really good barbecue. Mm, I'm very jealous. <laughs> uh, food is fun. All righty then. Uh, Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakafon Torka, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tomo Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, you going to any cons? Mm, not at the moment. Uh, all right, it is no problem. <clears throat> uh, also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can support us. <clears throat> Sorry, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreoncom show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast exclusive deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about the thank yous i would like to thank jacob lucky knight and also master of like thank you so much guys you are great so anyway i have been norman sanzo i am the silver quail i'm yaka and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the mbs show see ya adios happy new years everybody Yeah, new year, new start, and bills I need to pay. Oh, God. Yep, that sounds about right. Thanks for reminding me that I have to get to work in two days again. Oh, can we just have this time loop of not going to work? Them's the brakes. <laughs> <laughs>